Hey everybody, Pastor Adam here. Hope you are all doing well. We're gonna continue looking at the Psalms today. And uh, today is the day we're gonna look at Psalm 107. Some of you, you may have a favorite Psalm or one that just kind of reaches into a deep place in your heart. Psalm 107 is that for me. I have a special relationship with this Psalm. Many of you may know that before I came to Seacoast, I was on staff with a ministry called Young Life. Young Life's an outreach ministry to teenagers, and I loved this ministry because it was the ministry God used to reach me at age 16. One thing that always took place at Young Life camps was something they called a say-so, and it was based on a verse in this psalm. Psalm 107 verse 2 says, let the redeemed of the Lord tell their story. Another version says it like this, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. It was an opportunity for kids who had given their lives to God to stand up and say that they were now a new creation and this was going to be a new beginning. It was exciting to see so many kids who I had pursued and prayed for surrender their lives to Jesus and now have the opportunity to stand up and say so. All of Psalm 107 reads with this tone of victory in it. We believe that it was either a song or poem based on the way it was structured. Because there are four main stanzas that all begin with the same kind of phrasing. It says, some people were so lost that they basically did these things. They they were so lost and then the writer fills in the blank. He says, some wandered in the desert wastelands and could not find a city. He says, some sat in darkness, utter darkness because they were prisoners. He says, some became fools through their rebellious ways and they suffered for their choices. And he says, some went out on ships to be merchants and find wealth. Four groups of people, each of them turning to different things to find fulfillment. And each of them experiencing the same kind of emptiness as a result. The writer gives us some hope though because he tells us that though they looked for life in different ways, they each ended up in the same place. They had the same response to God in the end. He tells us same language again, all four times. Then they cried out to the Lord in their trouble. That's verse 6, 13, 19, and 28, four different places. These people all cried out to the Lord in their distress. Different people, different circumstances, different problems, and they all ended up crying out to God for help. And his response was the same each time. The second half of all four of those verses says the same thing. The writer tells us that God saved them from their distress. Let's think about what these people did. Some of them screwed up, right? They were rebellious. We can, we can relate probably, or at least I can. Some of them became focused on the wrong things like wealth. But in each case, they stopped. They looked up and cried out. And in each case, God was merciful. God delivered them from their distress. What is the trouble you're facing right now? The writer of Psalm 107 has something to say about it. In our distress, we should cry out to God. And just as these people found him to be faithful to deliver them from their trouble, God will continue to be faithful and deliver us too. Then we, like these people at the beginning of the psalm, can stand up as the redeemed of the Lord and say so and tell our story. Let me pray for you. Father, we're thankful that despite all the chaos we live in at times, there's still a victory story that runs throughout our lives. All we have to do is look up and cry out. You have proven that you're faithful again and again. And so we trust God that as we cry out to you, you will respond and deliver us from all our trouble. In Jesus' name, amen.